So I forgot to tell you this, and I was thinking about it last night. When we were... There's not too many times that I just get, like, blown off my feet and, and just, like, my brain locks up, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay. But we were in Moab, Utah. I was checking into our uh, Hilton Hotel, which mm -hmm. was phenomenal, by the way. If anybody's going to Moab, I've got the hotel for you. It's reasonably priced, but it was brand new. Whatever. Check it in. <laughs> And, you know, I give my lady my stuff and she's typing it up and, and she's like, oh, you, you, three of you? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, it's like, you got a kid? I'm like, yeah, that's the third one. I've got a daughter. And she goes, what's that like? And I, I, Paul, I had no, I, I had no idea how to respond to what's that like? With How a, old was this person? She was probably 19. And so she was very clearly trying to make like small talk while she was checking me in, but she's like, what's that like? And I, my brain just went like, wow. just could not. <laughs> I would have said something like it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> well, I, I didn't <laughs> say this, but the back of my mind was like, well, they're expensive, but once you get past that, it's <laughs> right. Was... <laughs> right. If you're not into financial freedom, they're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I'm checking it to this place. Anyways, I was That's thinking weird, about that, that last night. Really it, weird it's question. been living in my head rent free because I can't. I still don't know what I was supposed to say, and I don't even remember what I said. But um, yeah. I uh, I thought you were going to say she recognized you. Right? Oh no! And this is, happens very rarely, but every mm -hmm. once in a while, I'll be out in the world and. And uh, in Pennsylvania, that's only happened to me two or three times. But as you were saying that, what I of course thought it was the last time, which was a couple of weekends ago. We were at a winery doing like a tasting thing and we're sitting at a table and with my brother-in-law and my sister and uh, mm -hmm. actually someone my sister works with happened to be there. So we were kind of chatting with them or whatever. And this guy comes over the table and he goes, Hey, are you Paul? And I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I used to listen to your podcast. <laughs> I'm you... like, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> it's like, uh, did I do something wrong? Or... <laughs> you used to? Are you about like, to... I used to listen to your podcast. I still do, but I used said, to. I know too. you from your podcast. <laughs> like, like, geez, I was like, "Yes, I I used to be popular." Like, <laughs> what? I don't know what this. I'd like. Okay. Anyways, uh, only because I saw you tweeting about it with Mary Jo. You switched to Notion. Yes. Welcome to the club. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you use Notion for? Uh, well, right now I'm going to use it to turn off my furnace. Otherwise, this podcast is going to actually you can't you actually use Wait, it what? for that. <laughs> so this is more powerful than I thought it was. Um, so uh, I used it when I started at Stardock as okay. Well, well take like a step back. Management type stuff. Yeah, take a step back. And so you'll appreciate this because here's here's what's going to happen. I, I'm I'm calling this now. We'll see if what happens. Okay. You yeah, may I remember think, a little thing I, called I think I know what you're going to say called Evernote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was I I, I never Evernote was a, a rabbit hole i went down for quite a yeah. while and then suddenly yeah. microsoft's like wow people like evernote let's invest a bunch of money making seven different versions of one note we're gonna you know we're gonna take back that market share because whatever yeah, we don't want yeah, them yeah. eating our lunch fine evernote well, yeah is... so by the way i just uh, sorry just to yep. just add to what you said i mean microsoft uh, that's the whole point <laughs> of this programming series i'm writing uh, which is really a history of windows series which is microsoft is really just a series of reactions to things you know yeah. they had one note uh, from I don't know 2003 on something like that. Yeah, but it was what it was, and then yeah. Evernote kind of came. I think Evernote is a great example of what is now still the current generation of new kind of lightweight tools that mm -hmm. you know uh, cross platform, web based, you know, blah blah blah, whatever. And yeah, okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go on. Anyway, yeah. so, so Evernote rises in popularity. Microsoft, Microsoft chases the rabbit as you call it, <laughs> and they built it up, and then Evernote sort of faded. Evernote's still around. I'm sure there's people who are paying and using it, but whatever, it's still there. Now, That's you right. know, jump a few years later, Notion comes along and creates a really cool tool, and it begins to grow in popularity. And all of a sudden, Microsoft's got Loop. Like OneNote, we don't care about OneNote. We've got Loop now, and, and yeah. Loop will so, come out eventually. You remember Laura Butler, who yep. used to run OneNote and yep. probably some other stuff at Microsoft. And I had a lunch or coffee with her one time, probably right before she left Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And she had asked me ahead of this meeting, and we talked about it then as well, uh, what I thought about Microsoft working on a lightweight version of OneNote. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what she was, at that time, I, I, I don't think Notion was a thing yet, or maybe it was, I really wasn't aware of it. But I, I think what they were responding to at that time was, this rise of these lightweight new tools, a lot of markdown based stuff, uh, especially on the Mac side, you know, 
And I, I, the thing I had said to her was, I said, look, I, I've used OneNote since it was the thing. I, I, I love it in its own way. I, I feel like it's gotten a little top heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, my recommendation was, it's hard for my, Microsoft will never do this kind of thing, but I said, really, what you should do is just walk away from OneNote and just do, redo something. You know, like they, they had done things like Sway, mm-hmm. which might have been like the next generation PowerPoint, but not really that kind of stuff. And I felt like at the time they, they were looking for like a Sway type yeah note taking something something list maker whatever Mm -hmm. and um yeah but then notion arrived so i'd never i wasn't familiar with notion and when microsoft announced loop it was confusing at first right Mm because they were talking about components and embedding things and you know whatever and then it must have been last ignite when they finally kind of said well this is what it's going to be like i was like oh yeah this must be the thing she was talking about laura butler you Mm know and um and everyone was there. A lot of people said, oh, it's just like Notion. I'm like, there's no way it's just like Notion. <laughs> it is exactly like Notion. It's exactly like Notion. Now, it's Notion tied into the Microsoft graph, right? So you're going to yeah. get all that Microsoft stuff. So I think in the Microsoft ecosystem, in the same way that like when Teams first came out, you would have said, why would I use Teams? We have Slack. I mean, it's, it's the same mm-hmm. thing. Microsoft has turned Teams into the ultimate Microsoft ecosystem tool. It's, you know, platform, blah, 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 whatever. I sort of feel like loop will do the same you know or, or could do the same could do i think it's yeah we haven't seen it yet i mean they've showed it off and it's kind so of so you might have uh, you uh you yeah you've published stuff to the you like starting blog posts and stuff so one thing that notion is actually pretty good at is you write something in notion mm-hmm. i don't know what the format is i mean it's not markdown but it's um i don't know what it is it must be maybe it's html i have no idea yeah. but you can copy it Yep, paste it into WordPress at least, and it comes through format exact, like yep. it's right. And there's no superfluous code behind it. Like, if you do this from, uh, well, it supports Word native now. It supports Word natively, mm-hmm. but a lot of, like Google Docs, uh, at least on the old version of WordPress, you would paste in. It would be all these formatting codes in there, and uh, when you paste in from Notion, it's like super clean, like super clean. Yep. And uh, that makes it actually. That's where I publish to, right? For the most part, so that's like huge for me. Um, my only problem with using it as for everything, like, cause like you'd say, well, why don't you just replace like word, you know, mm-hmm. is the same problem I have with Evernote for the same purpose. Cause I used Evernote for writing for a while, you know, as you, as we just talked about, um, there's this thing on the side, it's a tree view yeah, and that gets really, really complex. Like yep. one of the things that I like about my current organizational system is I don't ever have to deal with it. Um, I do have a system up in OneDrive that's organized by year, by month, and I, I throw everything I'm working mm-hmm. on that month into that thing, and then I kind of forget it exists. It's gone. Um, and I save documents to the uh, desktop, and then I yep. I put them where they need to go when I'm done with them. Or I, I have folders I, you know, for to-do and things like things I'm working on that are long form where I might work on it from one, more than one computer. Uh, they are in a particular place, and when they're done, they get filed away. Um, the problem with Notion, the problem with Evernote, the problem with using like OneNote if you wanted to use it for writing for some reason, is that's that structure never goes away. Like you, that's front and center every day. Mm-hmm. So as in, I'm sure as you've seen, as you go, you're like, well, I need a folder or a page, they call them, you know, for this project or for this thing or for the book or whatever it is. Yep. You know, it's it's it, and I don't know how you get around that. Um, it's you not, to, yeah, you know, that's navigate an... in to find the thing, and it's a little ponderous. The way I use it, uh, primarily it's note taking, but like it, it's like note and feature logging. I guess is probably the best way. So we, I have reoccurring meetings every week that I keep notes for. That I like on Monday I can open it up and just edit and whatever. No, no big deal yeah, there. Yeah, the best yeah. way I can describe it to somebody who's never used it, and the way that I use it is think of having fully powered Excel embedded inside of a <laughs> Word doc because that is how I use it. Because you can have databases that are linked. So let's right. say somebody wants a feature for Start Eleven. And I know we can't get it to it, but I'll, I have a, a an ex- effectively a, a database, if you will, almost like an access mm-hmm. database of all the features of all products that we eventually want to include. And then mm-hmm. on our Start 11 meeting, um, I just have it filtered by that at the top. It's like, here's nine features that we want to build eventually, and then whatever yeah, the topics what, are. Yeah, what are the best ones to do first? Yeah. Or... And so that's how I use yeah. it. Well, I mean, I, I, I think that's how people are going to use uh, loop as well and it, because that's of all kind the of what i stuff, hope right? because i think you yeah. to your point is i think it's very intentional that microsoft is not letting notion at least as of right now have like deep api graph access to its platform because i think right, notion would right this will be the advantage lunch. 
Yep. And I and by the way, I you know in with regards to that conversation I had with Laura, which was, you know, Microsoft has this weird. They they see the future, they want to get there, but they also have this legacy base. The the people who use tools that are powerful and have been around for decades, like Word and Excel and PowerPoint mm -hmm. and Outlook and whatever else, are not interested in using something that doesn't do everything they want. If you're an Excel power user and you have to have Excel, if for whatever reason it does whatever it does, you, you can't use numbers or mm -hmm. whatever the Google thing is or whatever. Like you you have to use Excel. And I think one of the things that's interesting about this approach is um, – you can embed, like you said, these things in there if you need that. So most people, like I, I, I could get along with, I could probably use VisiCalc 1.0 mm -hmm. for all my spreadsheet needs. I don't really need, I don't use them a lot. And I think that's true of most people. So whatever the native stuff, the table builders and the calculating things and stuff that's built into Notion or Loop or whatever, probably fine for most people. Yep. But they're letting you bring that stuff in. And uh, for those that it's not fine for, and th that's how you make that transition. And I... I think it's going to work in the Microsoft world. Like, I think it makes sense. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe there's a possibility. I don't know when they're going to announce Loop, but if it's a build uh, soon or mm -hmm. at Ignite later in the year. I mean, maybe Mary Jo and I, for, for that, look at Loop. I mean, we will look at it for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I will too, because Stardock mm -hmm. uses Office 365 extensively. Yeah, why not use the thing that's you're already right. paying for, the kind of thing. But, you know, <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at it, but I think we had... Mary Jo and I we used OneNote for I want to say twelve years, mm -hmm. and we have twelve years of notes. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's a significant undertaking. We've expressed to each other privately, and sometimes it's spilled out publicly about our frustrations with the OneNote over time. Um, and I've we've talked privately about different things like a shared Word document or shared folder. We could just mm -hmm. have a Word document, or you know. Blah blah blah, whatever. Um, but you know, it's a big deal moving to anything, like yeah. changing anything, like anything you've used for a long time. Like that's really hard. Yeah, break those habits. And, uh, it's tough. Yeah, but Notion is. It's been. It's not perfect. You know, no, like these little not. things. Like I, I used I, I until this past week. I used Notion at. The, oh, I'm sorry. I used uh, OneNote as well. Because I use it for other things, at the gym. So like when I go to the gym, I would like I open OneNote. It goes to a page called Gym. You know. Mm -hmm. And it has the weights I put on the different machines. You know, and of course, I can edit them in real time. And, you know, if I go up or down, I would, well, I usually hopefully go up. But um, so I, I'm like, I was at the gym the other day. And I'm like, oh, I got to I gotta push this into Notion, right? So I did. I put Notion on my phone. And then it comes up. And the text is like, it's like really small. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, cool, whatever. You just, you know, it's a phone. You just boop. And you, no, that doesn't work. Oh, Notion will not, will not, at least on the iPhone, you can't. Uh, zoom it like you, you know what I mean like you can't change the size like I would have to go to the document I think on my computer I don't think I can even oh edit. yeah you're right it does not definitely yeah doesn't. isn't that weird it's just a weird little like you know and this these are the stumbling blocks like um this is not mission critical I can still read it it's fine and in fact I'll probably just go back to my pc and raise the font size on this one document because who cares but you know at the gym I would just do this I didn't think about it mm -hmm. like I just you know if it was too small I just zoomed in and these kinds of blockers are what prevents people from making changes, right? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, not that this is maybe a huge deal, but a lot of people would do what I just did and be like, oh, you can't even zoom this thing. No, I'm going right. back. Yep. You know, anyway, um, this is kind of, this is a, a, actually a really interesting topic. I didn't realize we we're going to be discussing it, but, um, but yeah, this is the whole, I talk about this, I write about this stuff all the time. It's hard, you know, making change like this is hard. Or it can is. Be, you know? One of the things that, that I love about Notion, uh, and this is honestly, it's not that big of a feature, but it works mm -hmm. really well for what I do. So if you write a sentence, or I, I use bullet lists. I can even show you. Maybe this is going to get scary. Oh I'm boy, here we go. I'm, I'm Technology gonna try to, demo. I'm going to try to detach the display of the surface. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is... Is the display you're detached is like a, a surface Oh, book there goes something? the background. Oh, what? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so like I do this for my the podcast on Friday. I don't know if it's going to show. By the way, the world's first demonstrated use of a detached screen on a Surface Book in 2022. Look, see the color? You're talking about color coordination there? Well, the background. It's right there. Color. You got it. Like, so you can just you can change the color of like tab yeah. or bullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real easy. You can ch you just you just type slash and then the color, but it makes it for when you're. I like that. I I like the way it does for it. You can do slash and then it gives you a. Yeah, yeah. 
like you, you do slash you do blue, headings, for example, and you can do the background um, blue and it makes it very easy for when you're trying to do a meeting or whatever to have yeah. things grouped by color. And it makes it just very simple to. That feature is actually why I wonder what they're using. Cause it's not like, well, I haven't actually tried this. I wonder if you could just type in markdown and if it would translate it. But if you have like, um, sometimes you'll type what you want to be a heading and then you go down to the next paragraph. You're like, Oh wait, I want that to be a heading. Mm -hmm. You can't go to the beginning of it and type slash anything. It won't work. But you have to actually go above it, do slash yep. H2 or whatever, and then delete back. You know, you can do it that way. But it, it has its own little way of formatting. I actually, I, intuitive is not the right word. I find it to be very easy to use. Once you understand right. all you have to do is type that slash, Yep, you're, you're good to go. Yep. You know, it works well. Speaking of good to go, we'll see if I do this. Tempted to put a pie hole. Oh, dude, I, what is going on with you? I just mentioned this to someone 10 minutes ago. Really? I am literally thinking about the exact same thing. So I don't know if this Raspberry Pi still works, but I had it for a while because I was screwing around with programming and stuff on a Pi. Get uh, out of my brain! <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I want to block every damn thing my stupid TV tries to call out to the internet. Oh, I the never TV. Want, okay. okay. I never want so to see it an update here's again. Here's why I want to do this. Like, obviously, when you're on a computer, yep. you can uh, have extensions, you can get rid of ads and whatever. Um, when you're on mobile, it's a little trickier. Some mm -hmm. browsers have some things, some don't, you know, whatever. But the thing you can't fix is apps. Yep. The New York times app makes me insane. But the worst example is if you do like, I happen to use Google news or the Google news feed, like it's the Google mm -hmm. app on iPhone or whatever, but this would be true in Apple news or any other news app. You, you're like, Oh, I want to read that story. And you click on it in the list. And it pulls up in the web view inside the app, and it's just animated, blah blah blah, whatever. I'm re you know, you're reading, and something pops up in front of it, or mm -hmm. like the, you, you scroll by the ad, so you don't have to watch the animation, and it pops down in the corner, and it has like a little X on it. You tap it, and then there's a countdown before it actually closes. So I literally sitting on the in the chair this morning reading this thing. I'm like, no, that no, enough. I'm gonna get a pie hole. I can't stand this. And it, it, it's amazing that you just brought that up. Yeah. So I don't know if my ras Raspberry Pi still works. That's I. I literally yeah. just there's well, a server rack. The good news is these right things here. cost nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just go get one. And um, yeah, no, I just I I mentioned it to Lauren this morning. I'm like, we were talking about Edge and blah blah blah, whatever. And I said, you know, I, I I'm thinking about just throwing it right in my router. No more ads in the whole house. I can't I can't yeah. stand it. I I can't stand it. We'll see how long it takes me to hold off. The only thing I'm worried about is just making sure it doesn't interrupt like calls like this. Yes, there's all kinds of things. This is the well, this is the problem with technology, right? Yep. So, yeah, there are little things you can do. Like I've looked into this. Like on mobile, there are kind of VPN-y type things that may or may not work to block, but but they could cause certain apps to mm -hmm. not to work. And yep. you know, the advice is always like, well, if this happens, you can just disable it temporarily or, or maybe you know have a rule for that app and it's like yeah this is why people don't do this stuff yeah like, it's just... exactly it i don't want more maintenance yeah, in my life yeah yeah but I, I but yeah that's amazing that you just said that i that... really just the l i love my lg mm -hmm. but it had an update yesterday so what like, is what, what are yeah. the what are you seeing on your tv what's the, what's the well it just there? keeps it first off you install updates and then there was a thing out this week about vizio and i think they tagged samsung and lg about uh jump ads as they call them what? Which are live? They're banners. You look up, just look them up. I don't want to describe them because it's gets a little. If boring. I if my TV ever displayed such a thing, I would yep. crack it in half and throw it out in the street. Like but I, all I want is just an OLED display, none of the other crap on it. Just none yeah, you it. want a dumb display. That's yeah, what that's you it. want. I don't, I don't want yeah, it. To, you want right. Yep. I don't want it to connect to the TV. Every, I don't want every recommendations. Every device and product and service on Earth wants to do more. And it's like, no, just do the thing you do. Yep. I don't want anything else from you. Yep. I want the internet from that company. <laughs> I want that thing to display it. I don't yep. want anything in between. No value add. Nothing. Just yep. just a display. Yep. That is your value add. You do nothing else. It's either using the Xbox, which is fine, or an Apple TV. Never want to see the other interface. And so exactly. what I want to do is block all that content. Like you open it up for um, – yep. Like source input, and it'll be like, here's YouTube recommendations. It's like, I no, you no, gotta I'm not be kidding no. me. Did Microsoft make this? <laughs> it's a suggestion. It's not an ad. 